got everything all packed away. Huh. I guess I really packed everything in here. Oh, I knew that was a bad idea. Hi y'all, welcome back to Learning to Fly. As a quick recap, in the last episode, we talked about building the Dash Shop. Sorry if I got your hopes up about the Dash Merge. We left off with two big action items. One, decoupling the bag logic from the shop UI logic, and then also breaking down my widgets into smaller widgets. The state of my code was, well, not great. Y'all, I had about four widgets for the entire app. Each one just had massive build methods. I mean, I'm in the process of moving right now and my build methods were like my luggage. They just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until I regretted every decision that I'd ever made that got me there. After the last episode, I also received a tweet from a member of the community who was also experiencing the same nesting problem that I was. So I decided what better time to clean things up than right now. As a result, that's the focus of this entire episode. We haven't added any new features to my Dash, just decoupling and refactoring the existing code for the dashboard and Dash Shop. Because, well, tech debt is very real. To kick things off and make things easier myself, I did some preliminary code cleanup. That's like adding some consts, removing some unnecessary containers, removing unused imports, all of that fun stuff. Then our first big order of business was the bag logic. I needed to decouple the bag from the UI because I had my UI passing the bag contents between screens, which was a clunky way of handling that at best. The goal here was to make it so that the bag handles the add to bag logic and the UI is only responsible for transitioning between screens. I did this by pulling my bag instance out of the shop UI and registering it with get it. So whenever I need to reference my bag, whether that be for adding an item to the bag or to list everything that is in the bag, I just ask get it to give it to me. This change also helped to overcome another drawback from the last episode where my bag state didn't persist if I left the shop and came back. Since Getit is now keeping track of my bag instance, the bag and its items remain even when we navigate away from the Dash shop. Once that was done, I jumped into breaking my widgets into smaller widgets. Starting with the dashboard, each post was already its own widget, but I went ahead and broke things down even more. I went down the news cards build method and pulled out pieces of code that had its own job into their own separate widget. If you're wondering why I pulled out the widgets entirely instead of using helper methods, check out Craig's video on helper methods versus standalone widgets here. This means separating the top post bar, the post image, post caption, comment section, the like button, and the comment box. I also ended up creating a white space widget that is literally just a size box. It was easier for me to see which size boxes were used just for adding white space as I was refactoring. Then jumping over to the Dash Shop, things got more complicated because there's more user interaction to deal with. On the main shop page, I extracted the product grid, the product card, bag button, and the filter and search bar. On the product page, I pulled out the image carousel, size picker, quantity selector, and the add to bag button. And finally, over to the bag page, there's the list of product cards, the product card itself, price calculation section, and the checkout button. Throughout this process, I learned that deciding how to refactor a particular widget, whether it should be stateful versus stateless, required more thought than I'd expected at first, but it got a little bit easier as I got more of them under my belt. I was able to use more stateless widgets than I'd expected because so many of the widgets are just displaying data and the state was being held elsewhere. I will say this too, Watch out for default values that you set. I got errors quite a few times during the refactoring process where I forgot that I had set a default quantity and the widgets, namely drop down button, were yelling at me because I was selecting a value that didn't exist as a menu item. Now, I do have some questions about file structure and debugging, so let's check in with Fitz. Hey Fitz, are you there? Fitz, are you there? Oh, oh, hi, hi, Khan. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I heard through the door that you had some questions. Yes, in fact, I do. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right in because I know you're a little bit busy because I just showed up at your door with random questions. So thank you for showing up, by the way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
Cool, so my first question for you, Fitz, is I've cleaned up my code um, and, you know, kind of following your guidelines, breaking down my widgets, but what does your project file structure usually look like? Do you separate them by features? Does each widget have their own file? I mean, Craig recently introduced me to barrel files, which lets me import a bunch of file separated components all at once. I thought that was really neat and I've been using them all the time now. Any thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's good to separate things so that you don't end up with one giant file, right? Um, mm -hmm. And how you separate them is, is kind of up to you. It's, it's, um, I think my guidance for myself is what makes sense. And, and so what makes sense is going to be sometimes uh, widget level, sometimes feature level, sometimes some other level, um, uh, abstraction layer maybe. Um, and, and that's where I would start. And, and so some cases, um, like for example, if you look at the skeleton app, you'll mm -hmm. find that there's a settings subfolder that contains everything about settings. It contains the settings service, the settings controller, the settings uh, provider, the settings UI page. And that makes sense for that particular thing because that, that settings um, feature, so these would be the settings for like controlling dark or light mode or whatever other in-app settings you might have for, for that thing. That makes mm -hmm. sense as, as a contained unit or a contained feature. Yeah, um, for sure. You might have other cases where you just have a bunch of very small UI elements. And so maybe you want to have a subfolder that has, these are my custom UI elements. These are my, my custom buttons, my custom sliders, my custom whatevers. Um, and then that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But, and, and, and so there's no like really hard, always do widgets, always do components or, or features. Um, it's really just what makes sense to you. Okay. Gotcha. Maybe I need to go back, I guess, to rethink how I want it to be structured and what makes sense as opposed to just trying to break everything out and then putting it, scattering it everywhere. That's a good point. Cool. All right. So my next question for you is, you know, there's this meme, the print statements, print statements everywhere one. See, so that meme is me. I have print <laughs> statements scattered everywhere in my code. And that's not exactly the recommended way of doing that. Um, and so there's a lot of options when it comes to debugging Flutter apps. What's your go-to debugging tool or strategy? Print statements. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so like print statements are great because you get to have that customized message of uh, for yourself of like this, this value is meaningful for these things, for these reasons. And that's helpful. That's really good. Um, mm -hmm. And um, but like the, the print statement usually uh, slows things down. Um, uh, it clutters the code to some degree. So so like it's 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 not ideal. And so there's two things that I would say here. One is make use of the dev tools as much as possible. There's a mm -hmm. lot of great feature uh, sets in there that'll do all sorts of things to help with the, the debugging. Um, including a Dart debugger um, that you can use to set breakpoints and see um, and, and watch the uh, the variable values change um, if that's what mm -hmm. you're looking for. Yeah. Um, and I would also say if you if you like having those those customized messages that you have in the print statement to say this value is important for this reason. Um, maybe look into uh, some logging and or logging frameworks to figure out um, how you can maintain those because also the dev tools will pick those up as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can set the different levels for them and 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 be able to to filter them out for a production app and and then have that automatically streamlined as opposed to a print statement. Right. You have to go and find all of them and, and delete them. Yes, right. Yes, it's the finding and the leading that's usually a lot of fun, right? That's like the yes, best part exactly. of coding, right? <laughs> yep. Cool. Okay, so dev tools and logging framework. Cool. That those are two things that I can dive into, and maybe we can talk about uh, in another episode. Maybe not learn to fly, but maybe I'll crash the boring show, and we can talk about that Ooh. more. Yes, huh. absolutely. You should absolutely join the the boring show, and we'll we'll talk more about how to do these things. Okay, all right, so next time I show up, I'll knock on your door and we can do a boring show. You can help me some more with uh, figuring out all this debugging and file structure and everything else with uh, 
my dash. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I think that was all the questions I've had for you. Uh, thank you so much, Fitz, again, for showing up on such short notice, <laughs> always. <laughs> yes, absolutely. My pleasure, Khan. Have a great afternoon. Awesome, thank you, you too. Bye. So, one last thing before we go here. What's the best trick that you have up your sleeve when it comes to refactoring your Flutter code? Let me know in the comments or shoot me a tweet at Khan Nguyen. I'm excited to hear all of your tips. And so that's all we have for this episode of Learn to Fly. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.